Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Zoom Into Wine. It's time for the show and your host, Ian Blackburn. Hello, welcome to Zoom Into Wine, Greek Wines with John Boccio. I'll let John take over from here. He's covering for Ian tonight and the expert on the Zoom. Here we go. How's everybody tonight? Doing well? Thumbs up. Yes. Okay, good. I think we've got a few more people joining us, right? Um, yeah, people will be um, hopping on the Zoom as we go along here. So, okay. Give it a few minutes. Hey, Hector. Very good. It looks like I see, I don't know if, um, if uh, I see one name. Is it Spiros? I see at least one person who may be able to help us with some uh, pronunciation tonight. If I'm right, I'm not sure. There we go. Can you, can everybody see my screen now? You've got, uh, we're sharing. Okay, good. Yes. All right, good. Thanks for letting me know. Um, I, I, uh, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about my, um, about my self, so you know that uh, you know who who you're talking to. Uh, I, I I have known Ian for many years now. Um, we, uh, um, but I uh, I teach wine and uh, work with wine. I've I've worked in and out of restaurants since I was 14 years old. I've had every job there is to do in a restaurant, and uh, um, and uh, eventually became sort of specialized in wine. Um, and, uh, really dealing with wine and food. So that's been my, my history. I come from, uh, as I mentioned a moment ago, I come from a, an Italian family, uh, and we always have wine on our table, uh, something similar to the, the, the Greek families I've gotten to know, uh, over the years and the Portuguese and the Spanish and the other, the other wine cultures, uh, that we think of the Georgians who I've gotten a, ch- a chance to meet over the years. But in my family, uh, when you sat next to grandpa at the dinner table um my grandpa would give well you 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 could when you were little you could you could choose either uh, a glass of milk or you could have what my grandpa called pink water which was a little bit of wine in the bottom of the glass and the rest of the glass was filled up with water so the older you got the more wine and the less water was in the glass and so wine has always been um really a part of the meal for me and um and uh so i always like to think in terms of 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 wine, not as an abstract sort of a cocktail, but as a, uh, as, as part of kind of a cultural experience. And, um, <clears throat> Over the years, uh, I've gotten a chance, as I said, to to uh, work with Ian and uh, help out with uh, uh, various events and and uh, sometimes teach classes and other things. I I, I sell wine now um, with a, an importer. I've worked at wineries. I worked at a, a winery in Napa, a very well known winery in Napa, um, and uh, I I uh, work now with uh, with wines from Europe, and uh, I get to work with uh, these beautiful imported wines um, from all over Europe, but um, we have a really, really beautiful Greek portfolio. And uh, when when uh, I was tasting some wines with Ian a few months ago, he 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 suggested that we we try to get together with some of his uh, some of his uh, some of the 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 merchant of wine faithful to uh, to taste some wines and uh, get a chance to to talk a little bit about them. So that's what we're going to be doing. Um, now Greece, let's see if I can. Uh, uh, oh, that's me. You don't need me uh, anymore. Uh, Greece is, uh, it's, it's, it's a a beautiful region. I'm sure you all know that, uh, that we think of Greece as being the, the, one of the birthplaces of wine, um, and Greek, uh, wines have been made for, you know, uh, many, many, obviously thousands of years. Uh, and, uh, much of the, 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 the areas west of Greece, uh, so, um, you know, Italy, France, what have you, uh, a lot of the, the communication of the vine came, uh, from the Greeks and also eventually from the Romans as they, as they, as they, they conquested throughout Western Europe, uh, and into North Africa. 
but Greece has what I can only describe as a dizzying array, array of those those autochthonous varieties that I mentioned before. These these uh, these these varieties that don't really exist anywhere else in the wine world. Um, and they've been growing there for, as I say, you know, many hundreds and in some cases thousands of years. Um, the, 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 the interesting thing is that the, the quality of Greek wine has uh, increased tremendously over the past maybe 25 years or so, uh, close to 30 years or so. Uh, the, the wines were made in uh, uh, traditional ways and they were they were fine they were sort of doing their doing their thing but um, the the at about that time 20 so years ago 30 years ago uh, the Greek uh, uh, the the Greek culture or the Greek government started to come into the 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 eurozone and the the European Union now there was a lot of pressure in lots of uh, wine growing regions throughout Europe and especially with Greece to uh, uh, actually uproot a lot of these uh, these ancient varieties and to plant vines that would satisfy the uh, basically the American palate. Um, and so uh, uh, there were all these vine pulling schemes throughout Europe and they they reached into to Greece as well. Um, and uh, it's one of the reasons why to this day we see a lot of a lot of wineries uh, in, throughout Greece um, with varieties like Sauvignon Blanc and Syrah and other things that that aren't really the sort of traditional varieties. My company believes that that these these wonderful ancient varieties are the ones that we we want to focus on, and uh, and and uh, uh, we 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 love them. We love them in in all of their guises because we believe that they really speak to this sort of sense of place. Uh, there are wines that are made uh, in, in, in many ways, in, in traditional ways, in some cases, uh, very, very close to the sort of natural ancient way of making wine. Uh, one of the wines that we're gonna taste today is even um, uh, foot stomped, the grapes are foot stomped. So, um, you know, very, very old traditions that we see uh, throughout, great, uh, throughout Greece. <clears throat> But anyway, uh, if you missed it earlier, we're going to see uh, two wines tonight from one producer uh, in the, the Peloponnese region in, in Patras and uh, one wine from uh, uh, far further north. Uh, so uh, let's see what's the, the next. Oh, here's 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 good. This is a really good uh, slide where you can see all these these uh, varieties that aren't really don't really have uh, corollaries or or, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, you know, we don't really find them in other places throughout uh, the world. So when the new world, you know, I'm sure many of you have have lots of wine knowledge. So please forgive me if if I'm going too far back, but just to get everybody on the same playing field, um, when new world uh, countries started to plant uh, vine, wine grapes and vines, um, new world being countries like, uh, uh, you know, post Columbian sort of Columbus countries like like uh, the United States, uh, they looked very, very directly at the sort of French model of wine, of, 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 of wine making and, and, and vine growing. So that's one of the reasons why we see in places like uh, California, for example, we see lots of uh, Cabernet Sauvignon and Sauvignon Blanc and Chardonnay and other, other things that are similar to what they do in France. But um, a lot of the varieties that, that stayed, uh, that are from Greece really sort of stayed there on the 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 um the the peninsula and haven't really made their way out of the world too much and again like i said earlier there was a little bit of pressure from uh from the the um the the need to grow the economy and boost the economy to uh sort of uh start to uh maybe go in that same direction of of uh of of growing grapes that other people recognized around the world. Um, but you can see uh, from that slide how many of those varieties exist. That's really, really quite amazing. And the first wine that we're going to taste, we're going to kind of go through them 
uh, a little bit here, uh, is from uh, down in the southern region. You can see it on the map highlighted here from the Peloponnese. This is a grape variety called Roditis. Uh, now, Roditis is, is uh, often throughout Greece, Greece uh, uh, blended with a variety called Sabatiano, uh, but in this case, it's done just on its own. Now, this winery, I, before we start to taste the wine, I want to talk a little bit about it, and maybe Spiros can uh, chime in because he's been there. Um, this is a, a really, really fantastic winery. It's considered a young winery by Greek standards. Uh, it was established in, the, in, believe it or not, in the 19th 1990s uh, by two brothers and their their winemaker friend. So it's a it's a, a trio of principles. And they wanted to sort of get back to this idea of of making wines in as as, as close a way as possible to their environment uh, using these ancient varieties. They do have on their on their property uh, some uh, uh, more modern varieties. Uh, when I when I keep using these these this term varieties and modern and stuff, I should probably I should probably sort of define that a little bit. Um, there are thousands of different grape varieties that we could. Uh, uh, grow to make wine. Uh, many of those, uh, many of the best come from a, a sort of parent plant material uh, that is, is known as vitis or vitis vinifera. Uh, the, the word vinifera sort of denotes that there's, there's, there's wine that could come from them. Um, and that those vinifera vines, uh, we believe originated in, in the Republic of Georgia. So a little bit further east to uh, where we are on this map, uh, where we are in Greece tonight. Anyway, <clears throat> the of those thousands of different varieties, there are only a couple of dozen that are known as the noble varieties. Noble meaning the ones that that over the years people have sort of recognized they make the the, the most prized wines. Now, many of these varieties uh, that we're going to taste tonight actually predate those noble varieties. So for example, uh, in modern winemaking terms, Cabernet Sauvignon is a, is a very, very well-known uh, noble grape variety, but it's a pretty recent uh, 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 discovery, actually. It was a, uh, um, it's a, it's a uh, uh, French sort of uh, uh, vine that came from parentage of Cabernet Franc and Sauvignon Blanc. A grape like this one, Roditis, uh, predates that by, you know, many, many, many hundreds of years and probably thousands of years. Uh, this variety is, is a, a wonderful one that grows very, very well here, but it hasn't really found much of a foothold in the rest of the wine growing world, much like many of these grapes. So even though we're talking about uh, uh, varieties that have been with us for so long, they just haven't sort of um, uh, uh, been planted widely outside of the region. We love varieties like this. My company loves varieties like this because they give us a sense of, uh, of place. You know, wine is, is this wonderful thing Thing that sort of can sort of take us away from our sort of everyday um, life and uh, and and sort of you know give us an idea of of different people and culture and places and um, and this is a, a a great example of that. Now, um, this winery itself is from uh, as as was mentioned earlier, Patras, which actually is is. Uh, is is you know quite high in elevation, and most of the vineyards that this winery uh, uh, farms are at about a thousand meters uh, uh, elevation, very 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 high. And in fact, uh, many of these vineyards uh, still have snow on them uh, uh, well into the springtime, and <clears throat> so they 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 you can you can sort of see the crystalline waters of the of the Mediterranean while you're standing in a vineyard. That that uh, or you know that 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 is sort of surrounded by uh, high up mountains with with uh, with snow on them. It's pretty pretty dramatic actually, uh, and really really quite beautiful. 
Now, uh, because of that, the, 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 the vines that grow in regions like this, where we have these high elevations, the vines can, can, uh, can end up making, uh, growing grapes that, that, that can be made into wines that have incredible balance and, uh, and, and elegance and beauty. Now, this is because since these vines are so high up, even though uh, a vineyards like this can be quite warm during the day, there's actually quite a wide temperature swing in these vineyards between day and nighttime temperature. Now in growing grapes or growing anything, we refer to this as a, a diurnal uh, uh, shift. In other, in other words, the difference between a day and nighttime temperature. And when we have that in a region like this, we have this, this the, the vines have a, an ability to, to uh, grow fruit that can develop uh, the, 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 the sugar that it needs during the day and it can rest at night and retain some of the acidity. And, uh, and because of that, we end up having these amazingly beautiful sort of balanced wines that, that in, in other places, they might, they might not have the, the, the delicacy and the elegance that wines like this uh, uh, sometimes do. Now, these are vines that also have this sort of really beautiful kind of limestone uh, uh, kind of soil. Uh, underneath the, 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 the subsoil there, uh, or the, the, the surface. And uh, this actually is kind of a small property, uh, believe it or not. It's, it's, uh, it's only about, uh, I think it's about 14 hectares, uh, which is, 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 is pretty small. Um, hectare is, is uh, for uh, those of us is about 2. Uh, I don't know, 2.4, 2.5, 2.49 or something uh, acres. So it's quite small. Um, but uh, they work also this, this, uh, these, these uh, two brothers work with some other uh, growers right around them. And they're very, very committed to uh, natural farming techniques. And uh, the vines are all uh, certified uh, organic. And uh, they're made in a, a very kind of low intervention way. And they're, they're, they're really, really quite, uh, quite proud of that, um, that sort of low intervention sort of uh, uh, farming uh, that goes on out in the vineyard. Uh, so I want to toast all of you and uh, welcome you to the class and thank you for coming. Uh, and maybe we'll taste this wine together. So I understand that everybody got a, 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 a set of wines uh, for tonight. So uh, hopefully you've, you've, you've got your uh, roditis. You can see the, the, uh, the label there. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's a sort of a, a, a drawing of uh, a building right on the, on the, on the property here. Um, and, uh, uh, you'll, you'll see on the back that it's, uh, uh, certified organic, uh, uh, wine. Um, now, uh, all of the, well, most of the wines that we work with, e even if they're not sort of certified organic, we, we try to work with, uh, growers who, who are, um, pretty, uh, pretty conscious of what they're doing out in the vineyard. And this is a, a really a great example of that. Now, um, just so you know a little bit about this grape variety, Roditis, it may come from, um, uh, uh, from Rhodes, uh, which could be a, a clue as to the, the, the name Roditis. Um, but it also, this particular grape variety, even though it makes a, a white wine, it's actually got, if you see it in a vineyard, it actually has a, a little, a, a kind of a lightly pink skin, the grape. Uh, so if you, uh, mine isn't really showing any color in the light that I have, but every once in a while, you can see just a little touch of color in this, in, in this wine. Uh, it's not a flaw. It's because this particular grape variety has just a little, a little, little touch of color to it. Now it's a, it's a, a, a late ripening variety. And that's really great uh, because what that means is it takes a long time to develop the, 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 uh, the flavor that it needs out in the vineyard. But if it's grown in a high altitude vineyard like this one is, then it can retain the acid that we want to see. And, uh, and, and, and the wines tend to have this wonderful sort of nerve and presence uh, uh, to them. Uh, and uh, uh, it, uh, it, 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 it sort of shows quite a bit of, uh, uh, of character for, uh, you know, a, a wonderful sort of, 
you know, firmness uh, and uh, uh, acidic sort of component to it. So anyway, uh, cheers. Well, I'm, not, uh, drink, I'm so, not drinking. So tell me a little bit. I'm I'm drinking, but I'm not drinking. I didn't buy the wine flight. So if you could be oh, a I little see. more, um, just to give me some reference, because I often buy wines after, uh, and I drink uh, whites from Sicily and stuff, but I haven't had, uh, maybe I have, but not for a while, what, any whites from Greece. So is this, you know, is it? I it's very I, dry. It's, it's, dry, it's pretty dry, but it's actually got a kind of, if you drink Sicilian whites, uh, there are some, uh, you, you might actually find some interesting sort of uh, uh, connection with, the, with those, this, okay. so this wine has on the, on the, in the aromatics, it's actually got this, there's a little bit of a, a, a honeyed kind of herbal uh, character to it in the, in the nose, but it's not, it's not a sweet wine at all. It's really, it's really quite dry and it has this wonderful kind of, uh, a slight, um, uh, uh, almost like a bitter almond kind of a, 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 a slight flavor to it. I don't know if anybody else has any like a day sort drinking, of thoughts. Kind about of a day drinking wine. I mean, I shouldn't say. Yeah, I think I think so. I think I think yeah. If you're if you're a day drinker, which I appreciate, I we always we always like day drinkers out there. You know, the like something you can um, have. You you guys get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now I would. Say, or something yes <laughs> yeah I, I it's 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 a very very fresh wine uh because of that acid that i mentioned but it has some really cool sort of complexity because of that of that sort of uh uh, uh almondy note that i mentioned before i don't know if anybody else is sort of picking up on that but there's kind of this this wonderful sort of uh i already used the 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 term uh um uh herbal uh what i mean by that is that there's a there's a to, to me there's also a, a um, uh, I, you know, I, I should tell you that I'm, I'm sort of loath to be the kind of wine taster who uh, starts to, to, to tell everybody else what I smell in the wine glass, because then I feel like I'm, I'm influencing them. Uh, I, I, I'm teaching a, a wine class in a, a, at, at a college right now. And uh, this particular class has a couple of people in it who want me to sort of lead them uh, uh, kicking and screaming into what every single wine tastes like. And, and uh, I'm, I'm bringing them around. Uh, I, I, I had a, a fun game with them where I started just telling them that it, it smelled and tasted like all kinds of things that I didn't think it did just for fun that they wouldn't pick up on. Uh, it was my own little personal wine nerd game. Uh, so I started telling them that something tasted like or smelled like bananas, even if it didn't, just to see if it would, uh, if, it, if it would evoke that in their friend. And they, were, they realized what I was doing. It was really fun. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I love that, uh, that, that, that idea of day drinking for a wine like this, uh, because this wine has that sort of freshness, but it's got uh, a little bit, it's, it's, it's a little bit more sort of uh, medium bodied than some that you might find. It's not an oaky wine. It's not a wine that relies on any of those kinds of things. And it doesn't have that kind of uh, creaminess from uh, malolactic uh, conversion that you sometimes see in something like a California Chardonnay. So I mentioned in my, in my, when I was chatting a little bit earlier that I think of uh, wine in terms of uh, food a lot. Uh, and that's something that I'm very, very committed to. I was classically trained as a chef and I, I, I believe very deeply in, in uh, having wine with food as much as possible, mostly because um, I, I, I was raised, as I told you before, not to have wine as a cocktail. So it wasn't one of those things. Now this wine could sort of stand on its own, but I would say it's not like that sort of meal in a glass that you might get with something like a California Chardonnay, where it's just filled with lots of oak and ripe uh, kind of vanilla sort of character. This wine isn't, isn't in that direction at all. It's actually much more in line with those Southern Italian island wines that you mentioned already, like a Sicilian wine, where you get this kind of nutty characteristic to it rather than kind of a an oaky vanilla -y kind of thing um, or creaminess to it. It has this sort of brightness to it that I really like. And also that acid is really cool because 
it conveys the flavor for a really long time. So even though I, I, um, um, I'm speaking, uh, one might think that, uh, with all the speaking that I'm doing, I, I, I might, you know, lots of saliva on all the rest of it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't really have much lingering flavor, uh, in my palate, but I tasted this wine now a couple of minutes ago because I'm, I'm so chatty and, uh, I can still taste it from a minute ago. So it's, it's, it's a really great wine for that. So I would say if you were going to have it during the day, um, I, I, I think I'd, I'd still encourage you to have, uh, it with some kind of, uh, uh, dish, but I would say that it's got enough acid that it can hold up to something that's got, uh, some, uh, weight to it. Like, I don't know if you eat, uh, things like quiche or other types of dishes where, you know, like eggy things that sometimes uh, needs a wine with a little bit of body. Um, but it's also got just, just, it's, it's, it's got that, uh, that nice long finish mm -hmm. and the, those, that sort of uh, uh, nutty complexity that right. I think would, would do well yeah. with, Great price with those 1479. Great price point. Yeah. I don't know. Did I answer your question? I, I hope did I answer. did. Yeah. yeah, you did answer okay. the question. I actually looked, I went, I was going to buy a bottle of uh, Greek before this. And I, they, it was Sicilian that I had bought a cup last week. And I was like, oh, it's fine. I don't, I have plenty of wine at home. Oh no. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's good. Random that's good. bottle of Greek wine. <laughs> good. Okay. Good. Yeah. Well, give these a try one day. I, I do I love, because I, I, I do I love Sicilian wines. I usually yeah, then fill excellent. up on other wines and, you know, take advantage. So very good. Okay, good. What did anybody else have any, any thoughts about this wine they wanted to chime in on with? If you do, you've got to unmute yourself. No. Okay. All right. I, I really like this one. Um, I think it's a, it's a really fun one and really, really delicious. Okay. Uh, so let's talk. Oh, there's, there's uh, Zappa, by the way, there's our winemaking friend. Um, and, uh, um, and we can, we can sort of see, uh, we can, you can see him there. Now you, you see, um, that he's surrounded by this, uh, the, this, uh, um, the, 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 this sort of wild sort of untamed looking, uh, uh, countryside. This is really common in these, these, uh, these smaller regions, um, throughout Greece and actually in, in parts of, uh, uh, Portugal and southern uh, uh, France and Spain, where they'll they'll have um, the 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 surrounding region, uh, the surrounding the vines. They won't like you know clear that area like we're we're used to seeing in California, where we see uh, much more of a, a monoculture, where you see just vines everywhere. That's wonderful, and that's one way of doing it. But uh, one of the things that you might find when you start to taste wines that are uh, kind of a little bit more uh, wild like this one uh, or like these. Uh, and they're, they're wines that are made using wild yeast, for example, um, then rather than, than, uh, than uh, uh, cultured yeast, uh, is that they want to kind of retain all of the, 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 uh, uh, the influence from the flora and the fauna that are nearby. So uh, a, a vine that is uh, organically grown, and actually um, this, this winery also uses some uh, biodynamic techniques as well. One of the things that that we find when we when we uh, when we look at those those areas those vineyards is that they have a um, uh, the 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 it's it's not just the plant population that we can see that influences the wines it's also the the uh, the uh, the uh, the yeast population as well there's so many all all those those plants have so many attract so many different types of wild yeast um that 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 ex that that's important for uh you know sort of the the what we think of there's a there's a word that the french use the terroir of a of a wine now terroir is a an interesting concept it doesn't really have a translation into english there was a book that came out maybe 15 years ago that was called Terroir that was written by a geologist. Uh, and, uh, um, and I think the book is 250 or 300 pages or something um, because it's all the things that the vine, that the grape sees in its growing season and, uh, and how those things influence the resulting wine that comes from it. 
And when you see uh, um, wild lands like this, the 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 farmers, I guess, for lack of a better term, the grape growers have taken a, a, uh, a stand that stance that they want to kind of retain some of that wildness and they want that to be part of the of the the wine that ends up in the glass and uh, and that actually uh, that idea of of, of uh, uh, sort of eschewing the the homogeneity of of of, uh, of wines that can come from um, using you know commercial yeast and and having a, a an organized growing uh, set of circumstances um, that that is great and that's that's good for for certain wines but in these cases these growers want to sort of maintain this idea of of of, of a sense of place uh, and um, and that's that's uh, that's kind of a great uh, uh, a great example of that. All right, now I we I want to keep moving because uh, I'm you know characteristically unfortunately uh, talking too much, um, but uh, oh there there we got oops we I don't know if I can go back uh, probably not, um, but these are sort of more pictures of this sort of wild landscape. You can see the the mountains, but way off in the distance that's the 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 ocean. But we're we're pretty high up uh, in this this picture. It's a it's a good one. There he is again. Uh, showing off some of this. This winery uses both stainless steel tanks and also uh, amphora uh, for fermentation, uh, which is which is uh, uh, pretty cool. Um, okay. Uh, oh, I thought we had a picture. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm going to sort of jump ahead a little bit. Um, hopefully I can figure out how to come back to this. Um, yeah. I want to show... One picture, I think, yeah, hang on. I wanna taste this first. So we're tasting out of out of the order of the slide a, uh, a little bit. This is the, because this, I wanna have two wines from the same winery. We might as well, um, because there's a little bit of a zeitgeist thing. So um, the, the next wine I want you to try is the Tetramethos, the Mavro Calavertino. Um, and uh, that's from the same winery as the uh, Roditis. Now, this wine is, um, is uh, fascinating. This is, a, this is a, another kind of ancient variety. Uh, and uh, it basically means black. Mavro means black or Mavro means black uh, of Calavrita. Uh, there's a, um, the, this, this, there, there are three sort of uh, clones. Uh, clone is a, is a, is a, 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 a strain of, of the same grape variety that has certain characteristics um, that exist. Um, but this is from a, uh, the, the clone that exists uh, right off of uh, Mount Helmos, uh, which is, is, is very close by. In fact, there's a, there's a, there's a ski resort uh, very close to this. Again, like I said, it's, it's, it's very far, very high uh, altitude. Now, um, this uh, uh, block of Calavrita uh, is uh, uh, the, the wine that we have here. This is the one that I mentioned before that's actually uh, foot stomped. Uh, now, we, people either have a very, uh, a very romantic uh, idea of, of wine and how wine is made, and maybe they saw TV shows or uh, old I Love Lucy episodes or something where people are stomping uh, the grapes, and they might they might think that's that sounds wonderful, um, and or they might think uh, may, maybe they're a little bit freaked out by the whole thing, and they they're 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 not excited uh, to think of someone's feet of being uh, in the. Well, it turns out that uh, uh, um, the 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 this is really the nature intended. <laughs> uh, uh, the foot is, is it's one of the best instruments to 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 uh, break open the grapes for many many reasons. Uh, for, first of all, obviously you need a little bit of weight to uh, to uh, break the grapes open, but um, the bottom of our feet are are are, are quite soft, um, even even when we have uh, calluses on them, and that's important because it won't they won't uh, break open the 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 seeds or the pips of the grapes. Um, when we, well, if we, if you stomp grapes, they, they don't break them open. That's really good because the seeds uh, can uh, contain some bitterness and we don't want to release that into wine. So for thousands of years, people have been doing this. 
We know now, based on technology, that they were probably using uh, one of the very best instruments uh, that that nature has ever created to uh, break open uh, uh, wine grapes uh, for fermentation, uh, and that's indeed how this wine, uh, how the, the 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 juice was released from these uh, from these grapes. Um, the the the. Variety itself is another late ripener. In fact, in high altitude vineyards like this, it won't ripen and be harvested until like mid October, even with climate change. It, it used to be late uh, October, but now it's 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 moving uh, a little bit uh, sooner in the year, but it's still an October uh, harvest for uh, for grapes like this. Um, now, just this one um, is is you know just a beautiful beautiful wine. It, be, I think it's 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 lovely because it's got this I, this this kind of sort of almost uh, red fruit characteristic. So um, as I, 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 I again I don't sort of like to influence people uh, too much with what I smell in the wine, but. Um, this one has this 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 sort of unmistakable. I I break that rule usually when something is just screaming at me. This one has this unmistakable kind of uh, uh, strawberry characteristic to it that I really really love, um, and uh, 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 and I really really think it's 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 evocative of this. It's not very dark as you can see if you're used to drinking you know sort of. California um, red wines that are are filled with sort of extract and lots of lots of color. Uh, this is a a young wine, but it's not really showing as much of that sort of bright purple thing that we all um, uh, uh, are so accustomed to uh, if we drink uh, lots of California wines. So it's got a little bit of a light color, lighter color to it. Uh, you can almost see through it. Um, I, I, it's not, if you, I mean, I think most of you have the wine, but if you don't, it's, it's, I would say it's darker than a rosé, but it's definitely uh, one that you can see through. Um, now this wine, it has on the, on the label there, you might see the word nature, N-A-T-U-R. That refers to this, this winery, they have a couple of different uh, 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 tiers of wine. The ones that they make uh, like this that have, um, there, there's, there's things like foot stomping and other sorts of techniques. That's what they, they where they save, uh, this idea of the, this, this word nature pretty soon. I think most of the wines that they make are going to, going to be in this direction though. I think they're, they're even, even though this, the Roditis that we tasted is, is, is quite beautiful. I think they're, they're, going for a little bit more of a rustic style. And they actually make another Roditis that, uh, that has that same nature moniker on it. Um, but there's a freshness and a beauty to this wine that I really love. So I'm gonna taste it because I'm running out of time here. Okay, now this is one of the most rare varieties even in Greece. Uh, this particular one. And uh, it's, it's, it's got this beautiful sort of medium body to it. In Greece, we were talking about uh, wine and, and, and food. Um, uh, I think, uh, you know, I, I, last time I was there, I, I had this with a, a lot of uh, um, uh, like uh, uh, cured meats and things like that. This wine is, 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 uh, I, I don't know that it would stand up to a big, you know, steak or, uh, you know, something like that, you know, braised short ribs, you know, it's, 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 it's more of a medium bodied red. Um, and, uh, I actually have a friend of mine loves this and he, and he actually chills this wine just a little bit. Um, I like it served in the traditional red wine temperature, but he likes to chill it and that's fine too. Um, if you, if you're in, getting interested in, in chilling your, your wines, this would be a good one. Um, you know, beautiful, beautiful wine. The tannin is, is, is really lovely. It's really, really, really soft tannins in this. Okay. Does anybody have any, any thoughts about this particular wine? Well, I could probably go on and on all night about this wine. Uh, this wine uh, right now, I've got it here in, is, is everybody from Los Angeles or we have people from all over the country probably on this call, huh? Uh, here in Los Angeles. Um, Se Sezuku is from Japan. 
Oh, cool. I know that for sure. Um, well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I, if you're in Los Angeles, uh, there's a restaurant in town called uh, Major Domo that, that, uh, that, that works with this wine. Um, and, uh, uh, it's a, it's a really fun one. They have this, this incredible, uh, um, uh, cured, um, Virginia, uh, ham that they serve, uh, almost like prosciutto. Um, and it's, 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 it's really, really amazing. Um, and it's, it's great with this particular wine. I just, I just love that combination. Yeah. Major Domo, you said, John. Mm -hmm. All right. This is a, this is, I mean, like I've, I've got this in my home in Greece. I live in Los Angeles like permanently, but also have a home in Greece and I spend a lot of time there. And, and I've got several bottles of this wine in my house here and I've never seen it in the United States before. So I'm going to have to go track that place down. That, I'm that, here that's, for that's you. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Ian's, Ian's got it too. So uh, there yeah. you go. Yeah. It's, 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 it's terrific. Okay. Now I know that we're, we're running short on time. So I want to John, sorry, real quick on the yeah. restaurant, you said it was in Los Angeles. Can you spell it? How yeah. do you spell the name? Uh, Major Domo, M-A-J-O-R-D-O-M-O. -O -O. All right, cool. Thank you. It sounds amazing. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty, it's a pretty, uh, uh, if you like kind of hipster restaurants and hipster neighborhoods, it's, it's, it's right up there. Um, so, uh, yeah, look it up. It's, it's, it's definitely worth a visit. Okay. Um, all right. The last wine that we have tonight is, uh, is from the, the opposite end of Greece. So we were down uh, in the South. Now we're way up North in, in the Macedonia region, all the way, all the way far North, um, now, uh, this is another area which which uh, is is got some high altitude vineyards. Uh, this one, though, not quite so high, about 330 meters uh, above sea level. Now, this is a region. Uh, the region is called uh, even the 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 the. Uh, let's see if I can get back to uh, here. Where are we here? Uh, okay. So now, now we're talking about this wine, the Nausa uh, 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 grape. You see, you can you can kind of see where they are up here. Um, now, uh, the um, Nausa is a region that is kind of defined by uh, one grape. So this is this is there. There are a handful of places in the world where where this is the case. This is one of them. Um, uh, so. There, there are some other grape varieties that are grown there, but um, if a wine says Nausa on the label, which is this word here, N-A-O-U-S-S-A, -S -S uh, it has to be of this grape here, the Cino Mavro grape. Now, Cino Mavro uh, is a uh, is 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 a a, a fantastic grape uh, that is uh, uh, it's actually um, uh, it's, uh, it's in a, the, the word Mavro, we saw that in the last, uh, grape as well. It's, it's actually, uh, the, 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 there's not really a translation that I know of, uh, other than sort of the, 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 the little black bitter one is what they is, 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 is the, the closest thing. Now that doesn't mean to say though, that this is a, a, a bitter, uh, wine. It absolutely isn't. And it's not a bitter grape. It's actually similar. If you, if you are a, a person who likes Italian wine, if you've had a wine made from the Nebbiolo grape, there's actually a, a, a there are a lot of people who, who, who find a lot of similar similarities with this particular, um, this particular grape from Greece, it's uh, and, uh, and it's, it's one that I really love. We actually work with several different, uh, ones, but, uh, Ian for tonight selected this one. I think it's, it's, it's incredible. He he's, he's, he's listed as a top value. Uh, I think he's absolutely right about that. Now, Vaini is actually, uh, a co-op. Now that's a concept that we don't have really here in the United States. It's a kind of a European thing. Again, I'm running out of time because I tend to be a little bit chatty. So I'll, I'll, I'll cover it quickly. Um, 
there are some areas in the wine world where um, they're they're either small or or defined by um, a, a, um, a, 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 a sort of a growing region that has lots and lots of tiny tiny holdings, vineyard holdings, where the growers are they 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 don't really make enough to uh, to have their own winery. They don't grow enough grapes to have their own winery. They're just small uh, mom and pop farms and uh, and they, they they often grow grapes. In this region, they grow grapes uh, along with some other things as well. Some of these are very, very ancient vineyards. In fact, up in Nausa, there are only about 18 or 20 uh, uh, vineyard uh, uh, holdings that 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 grow enough grapes to make their own wine. So this is the Vaini uh, 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 co-op is actually very, very famous in the world of wine because it's considered to be one of the great co-ops in the world. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and that's defined by um, the fact that the 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 growers that they work with have these ancient vineyards and they're and they're these tiny 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 little vineyards that have gone from uh, generation to generation in the families and uh, and again they specialize in this this grape this Zinomavro grape uh, here's a sort of a, a picture of it uh, you can see it's got it's got about 200 different vine growers uh, in this so that's that's amazing this is this is this is where they they, they, they they have lots of people who grow grapes in this in this area but just only a handful who make who have enough grapes to make their own wine um, so uh, this is this is a, a really a cool thing now this particular um, uh, uh, co-op uh, also has some of their own uh, uh, grapes and uh, uh, they of uh, their own they actually have some of these the, these other international varieties like I said things like Merlot or whatever but in here in this case we only work with their with their their ancient variety this is Sinomavro that's that's what we like um, very very dense plantings and uh, uh, very very special this is the tech sheet uh, it's it's the the the, the main thing that you need to know about this is that if a wine has um, that name on it, that Nausa on it, the uh, first of all, it has to only be the uh, Tsinomavro variety. And also uh, it has to have spent uh, 12 months or one year in a barrel before release. Uh, this one gets uh, a, a barrel, and then it, it spends uh, time in the in the bottle before before that uh, gets released. So, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, why don't we we can we can stop there, I guess, and we we can we can taste the wine. Um, now, the uh, like I said, this is a lot of people sort of think of it as as being similar uh, to the the Nebbiolo. Um, it doesn't really have quite the, the tannin structure that a Nebbiolo does, but it does have uh, a little bit of that. I, I'm glad that we uh, moved it to the, the end here because uh, I think it has a little bit more tannin and a little bit more structure than the last wine, and I didn't want uh, it to sort of color your palate too much. Oh, wonderful. Now, where is the last wine? I said before, probably didn't have the 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 structure to stand up to something like a, a steak or 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 a, a you know short ribs or something. This wine definitely does. In fact, this wine, and I think it's because of the tannin. Uh, this wine has. Uh, uh, can can also and up here, um, I I have a friend called George who makes wine up here, uh, and he's he loves uh, uh, game with this with this uh, with this wine. He likes uh, uh, wild uh, wild game uh, a lot, and um, that's what he's always telling me about uh, for this. So if you if you like that sort of thing, if you're a vegetarian, um, I honestly. Uh, 99% of what I eat is, is, is vegetable based. Um, this wine would, would be great. I think still with, uh, with sort of, uh, you know, autumnal kind of, you know, like roasted mushrooms and things like that. Uh, this, this wine would be great with that too. So anyway, um, 
the the wine i think still has that freshness from again uh being grown in such uh such high altitude um and uh, uh while they often in the old days with sinomagro uh once upon a time they would age these wines for many 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 years uh because the tannins were so coarse i think that uh, this is a good example of of uh understanding through uh, through grape growing and proper harvesting techniques and, and when to harvest um, and uh, also making wine uh, in a more gentle way can allow for those tannins to be tamed a little bit and can allow for the wine to uh, to to uh, be drunk a little bit younger. But I would say that this wine could still I mean, you could you could still hold on to this wine for four or five years. And I think it I think it would do uh, it, it would it would uh, show it would really reward that. That if you wanted to do that. Okay, very good. All right, I think I was told to, to John, go for about an question. hour, but we should try. Anybody have any thoughts about this wine? Uh, John, first of all, it's really delicious. It's a nice surprise for, for tonight's tasting, but um, you mentioned something about ageability regarding uh -huh. this particular wine. Tell me about, about that a little bit. Is well, there an ageability factor? Are we looking at maybe holding it until like a year or two is it drinking now or because I, I think i i would love this now but i would drink it i i would i i would say that if you wanted to be the kind of person who or if you if you are used to holding wines and and aging them i mean i would say that this wine would uh would absolutely last for for you know maybe three years three, four years in a bottle um if you if you stored it properly but i think you know most of the, here the the fact of the matter is most of us these days drink our wines uh, pretty much right away. Uh, and, um, and certainly here in the United States, we, we tend to do that. Um, I think this wine is nice and fresh right now. I think what's going to happen is that the tannins are going to soften over time just a little bit, but it has a nice acid and a good fruit underpinning to be able to support three or four years worth of aging if you wanted to do that. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the, you know, the Mavro Calabritino that we tried before, um, I think that wine is, is fresh and delicious now. I think I would drink it within the next maybe year or two. So I don't think it, it necessarily has the structure to be able to hold for longer, but I could be surprised. What's fascinating is that the Roditis that we tasted first, that wine could actually, uh, also age. Uh, for a considerable amount of time. I've tasted Roditis from this winery that is uh, uh, eight or 10 years old uh, and, uh, and, it, and it, it tasted great. Um, but I, I tend to like my white wines aged a little bit. Uh, that's, that's, that's me. I, I like that kind of uh, uh, nutty complexity that comes with time. Um, uh, there you go. I, I don't know if I answered your question, but- you um, did. And in regards to the combination of hillside and clayed soil, yeah, uh, that's an interesting combination. Uh, yeah, it is. It is. In fact, most of the stuff, uh, most of the time we see in regions like this, we actually see more volcanic soil in areas like this. Um, this wine has this is these are these are very, very ancient soils. Uh, and um, and uh, uh, um, they they have so it's a kind of a clay it's clay over the, the it's, it, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's clay that we see up top. And then if we dig a little further down deep, there's, there's this chalky sort of subsoil, but that's not always the case because this, this, this area, it is very, very hilly. And because of erosion, there are some areas where the clay has sort of worn away and you see more of that chalkiness up near the surface. It's really fascinating. You see these sort of undulating uh, um, um, uh, lines uh, 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 in the soils there. Um, and, uh, and I actually think that that the the chalkiness gives this is part of what's giving this wine a little bit of the structure that that uh, that that we see, um, and uh, I'm glad you I'm glad you're enjoying it. Yeah, I I I I, I don't I, I don't know what uh, what Ian's charging for this wine, but it's yeah, it's an incredible we're value. Picking up a couple of bot several bottles a case, I'm probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, it's fun. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Very good. John? Well, that's a good that's a good review. Uh, anybody John? else have any thoughts or notes about these wines? Well, hi. Um, I really think the smell of this wine is so interesting, but I'm having a trouble putting my finger on exactly what that smell is. And 
the best I could come up with was kind of licorice but, or candy. It was kind of a sweet licorice, but I don't know. What what do you think it is? There's ab- absolutely licorice coming out of this wine. I think you should be be confident and strong in that. I absolutely think there's absolutely <laughs> licorice. a licorice kind of a situation going on. Um, and I think that, but I don't, I to me, it's not a, a, a candied licorice, like a, a red vine kind of a thing. It's more like a black licorice, kind of a more, uh, uh, th- there's, there's, there's more of that to it. Uh, at least, at least to me, there is. Um, here, let's, uh, let's stop this share so that we can, I can see more of your faces. There we go. Um, uh, yeah. Who, who are we, who, who asked me that question just now? Hello. It's, hi. it's me. <laughs> oh, hi. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so there you are. <laughs> that's, that's helpful. I, it's, it's funny. It's, it's, it's challenging. I, I, I love, I love being able to, uh, to uh, have these kinds of things over Zoom because I can see people from lots of places, but um, but uh, sometimes if it's just a, a, a screen of names or whatever, I can't. Anyway, um, but you know, to me, there's also a um, uh, a uh, uh, there's a there's a funny kind of a a, a black olive kind of thing that comes uh, uh, through Cinomavro, and uh, and I get I, I I get that often with these wines. I only get a little bit of this, uh, a little bit of that in here, but there's a, uh, to me, there is a fruit characteristic of like a, a little bit of a, uh, kind of a black plum. There's a, there's sort of a black plum and a, and an olive. And, uh, and then I get a little bit of that licorice thing going on too. Um, um, I, and also the, there's, there's, there's a, um, there's, there's less of an herbal component than I got in the first wine, but I think I think there is a little bit of that. Um, and, uh, uh, you know what it, it kind of reminds me of. So, uh, so remember I said that I'm, I'm Italian and my family there, um, if you, if you eat too much, which is, is usually the case, um, you, you go out to the backyard and you, and you grab a stalk of, um, of, of fennel and you start chewing on it and that settles your, your belly for the next, the next round. Um, and, uh, um, and this wine has a little bit, uh, it reminds me a little bit of, of, of that, not, not the yeah. sort of aniseed kind of, uh, thing that comes, but more of that, uh, that, that, uh, that, uh, fennel, uh, kind of herbal component. Um, at least, at least that's, that's, that's for me. Thank uh, you. Very good. Anybody else have anything that they pick up in this this class? John, nothing that we picked up, uh, but we are drinking the Nuisa with, and we just made some roasted sunchokes. Oh, that made, sounds good. Yeah, roasted mushrooms earlier, and it is phenomenal. We are so oh. enjoying it. And we cannot believe the price point. $12.95, it's kind of unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, I know. I They should be charging us more, but we're not. We're not. <laughs> telling them to they make another one that's funny they make another one that's aged for longer in oak barrels and we have that one too but um and for some reason i don't know why but for some reason in macedonia Mm -hmm. uh they they use (laughs) they use terms that you'd see more like in france so they call their 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 one that they age for longer in oak they call it grand reserve i have no idea why but um but they they just do and um and it's got more of an oak component to it um it's 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 pretty cool but um but i i actually i'm glad that we chose this one for tonight because i i like the i like to see the the i like the grape to be able to shine through um like that um I, I, I do. Um, did anybody else have an, a, a favorite from tonight that they wanted to share? I know we're kind of wrapping up, but um, no? Okay. Well, I like them all. I really do. All good choices. Thank you. Thank you. For thank you. Wine night. I want to thank you so much for, for, for coming. I hope yeah, you, uh, you enjoy the rest of your thank evening. Your uh, Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. I, you know, honestly, I, I, uh, I promised Ian, I would keep it short because I, I, he knows that I have a tendency to just go on and on and on. He so I hope I was, I hope I was pretty efficient. He can um, go on and on too. So don't let him give you a hard time. Yeah. Okay. No, he didn't give me a hard time. He, he, he's very good about it, but, um, you know, he had me, he, it's funny. He had me, uh, uh, dial into one of these, uh, um, about the Loire Valley um, uh, over lockdown uh, to talk about uh, uh, Cabernet Franc from the Loire Valley. And I, 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 
I think he had to, he had to stop me. Like I, I went to, I went to too long. So anyway, I sometimes have the tendency to do that, but anyway, thank you all very much. I appreciate your time. And uh, I hope you uh, uh, got a, a good sense of some uh, a wonderful and traditional and unusual, um, but beautiful wines from, from, uh, from Greece. Uh, it was great to have some people who had been not only to Greece, but amazing that you've actually been to this winery. What a treat to have uh, on the, on the call here. Here. Uh, thank you so much. Great place. And I hope we didn't wake any babies or uh, anyone else. Um, but uh, I, I and I hope you take that that uh, that tip to um, uh, uh, to have some sort of roasted. Uh, what did you say? Roasted sunchokes, roasted root vegetables. That sounds fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, with uh, with some of these wines. Yeah. Thank you very much. And and uh, and cheers. Hope to see you all again on one of these calls. I appreciate all of you. Thanks very much. How do we say cheers in uh, so so uh, uh, Spiros? How do we say cheers and good night um, in uh, in Greek? Stiniamas. There you go. There you Kalinita. go. Okay. Okay. Stiniamas. Okay. Very good. Thank you so much. Good night. Thanks, Sharon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.